morning, friends. Good morning and welcome to this fantastic mega master course, which has been designed so beautifully for all of us by Shyam and Varun Daga, Manifestation Decoded, The Secret Behind the Secret. And you're really getting all the secrets out of you, Shyam. And it is such a wonderful journey each and every time. I mean, the music, the way you've curated the whole, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the meditations, and it's, it's fantastic. It's just mind blowing. Thank you so much. Thank so you. today, again, we are on this beautiful journey and we are on the 23rd day. And again, we have the second day of anatomy with ego. And uh, yes, yesterday we had a wonderful session uh, on ego traits and today also a master will tell us about the same thing. Ego trip is a journey to nowhere and egoism is the anesthetic which nature gives us to deaden the pain of being a fool. It's the act of seeing in yourself what others don't see. So lose the ego, don't live for compliments, instead live for accomplishments. Thank you so much and over to you, Shriyans. Thank you, lovely, lovely, thank you. I like don't live for compliments, but live for accomplishments, lovely, nice. Thank you. Live for a live for applause, not for the applause. Yes. Now we are learning your language. <laughs> it's like all the time you're haunting us. <laughs> you can't do bad. You can't speak wrong. You have to be in a joyful state. You're in a happy mood. It it affects so much, and personally, I feel so many changes and I'm so happy about it. The, the apprehenses, the judgments, you know, all these, I feel, oh my God, it was so stupid of me to think this way. It was so wrong. You don't feel uh, the, you know, those uh, thoughts against anybody anymore. And it leaves you in such a, uh, like uh, a beautiful state all the time. And that's what we are acquiring. And thank you so much for being, being there with us in this beautiful journey you have introduced to us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, you and all of you for listening. Because when I'm sharing, I, I'm also reflecting and it's helping me also grow and evolve. So thank you, all of you. You reflect a lot. We can see all your glow all the time. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you. So loads of gratitude every minute every second my heart always shows all my gratitude i just thank you all the time thank you so much right so friends today today we'll continue with our uh, uh, ego traits so yesterday we spoke about the four ego traits excuse me sorry so yesterday we covered four ego traits so one was uh, first was complaining, then uh, then being right. Uh, so complaining, resentment. Uh, you can share the slide, Kishore. Complaining, resentment, grievance, and uh, 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 and being right. Right. Four, four, four. Cover, out of sixteen ego traits, we covered the four traits, and today I'm going to cover the rest. So I'll start from where I left. So the last ego trait was uh, being right. And uh, in our med meditation today also during the uh, during the last part of the med meditation, when we were working on that healing of a relationship part, where I said, think of that person in your mind. Think of that person in your mind and, and, and say to that person, all projections, all projections, all projections, expectations, all projections, expectations, rejections, separations, and judgments 
I have of you and of uh, I have of you and of you and of me based on you I totally drop and complete and drop I totally I drop totally and completely so use it as a mantra use it as a mantra in your life uh, with any relationships and you will see you'll find peace you will find uh, uh, you will find uh, the freedom from the relationship So again, I'll repeat, I'll, I'll share with you two mantras, which I've shared you yesterday. I'll just repeat it to reaffirm with you. All projections, expectations, rejections, and separations, all projections, expectations, rejections, separations, and judgments I have of you and of me based on you, I drop totally and completely. So this is one mantra. Second mantra, I leave you free to be yourself. I leave you free to be yourself, to think your own thoughts, to indulge your own taste, follow your own inclination and behave in waves, behave in ways you decide to your liking, to your liking. So again, I repeat, I leave you free to be yourself, to think your thoughts, Indulge your taste, follow your inclination, and behave in ways you decide to your liking. And with this, you'll drop all resistance. You'll be able to accept and allow the person to be the way he or she is. And again, huge amount of freedom comes to you when you follow these two mantras. When you don't take things personally. Right, so and a lot of times um, when you meditate in different time, different situation, as you develop your own understanding, these meditations will more, make more sense, will make more deeper sense to you. And uh, these words, I've used it more like an affirmations when you're in a deep state, like a hypnotherapy when you're when you're in a receptive mode to 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 reprogram your mind to change your belief systems about your relationships. So you may practice these meditations more often if you really want to work on your relationships and it can really help you in a very deeper, from a very deeper state. So now we go to the fifth trait of our uh, relationship, of our egos, of our ego trait, which is, uh, yeah, we can share the slide, which is ego likes to defend its own truth. First is being right. Uh, fourth is being right, but now the fifth is ego loves defending its own truth. Yeah, just share the slide. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you know, ego, ego loves to defend its own truth. So because ego is a master of selective perception, perception and distorted interpretation. Remember this. Ego is a master of selective perception and distorted interpretation. So it always wants to perceive what it wants to see. It is very selective in its perception. Ten good things it will not see. One negative thing, if it wants to perceive, ego will perceive that. And it will enlarge that. And distorted interpretation. It will always, any situation, it will, it will always like to interpret it just to defend its own truth, what, what it ego wants to, what it wants to affirm itself. For example, religion. All religions teach us love, right? Now you may, you may serve it in the service of truth or in the service of ego. You know, when you, when you serve it in the service of ego, then, then it is so different. Then my my religion is separate from your religion. The very religion which teaches us love and which teaches us oneness, we use it as a tool to separate us from each other. Because again, in that also there is an ego. An ego is a master of selective perception and distorted interpretation. Even with God. I am separate from God and God is outside of me.
it's easy for us it's easy for us to believe in god then to believe that we are all gods the truth is we are not separate from god we are the extension of the same source we are all sleeping buddhas we are all sleeping sleeping christ we are all sleeping krishna we have to just wake up to our fullest potential as we are creating our dreams as we are creating our life the god, god the god is creating god created us in his dreams in his imagination and he is fulfilling his dream through us as we seek god to fulfill our dreams he is fulfilling his dream to us so one day one day a man and god both met somewhere one day man and god both met somewhere and both exclaimed my creator the god for god you are the creator because he created he, he created you in the likeness of what he is so we are all co-creators as you say to god my creator god also says to you my creator so ego again ego defends your own truth everything you want to perceive it in in, in the way it suits your ego now we'll go to the sixth part of the ego is the collective ego and collective ego is far more dangerous than than your, your personal ego like nation religion these are all collective they, they all they all form collective egos because then you are not alone you think you have a majority and so you feel you are right and you both feed we all feed each other we think my religion is better than your religion my god is better than your god dare you te- tell dare you talk anything negative about my god all as a collectiveness as a whole religion the whole as a whole um, community of or the whole or the whole religious tribe is ready to fight against you ready to kill the other person because how can you talk like this about my god so again for your god again you saw you, as if it is you are using god to affirm your ego god is neutral he only teaches you he is not judging you he don't care whether somebody is praising or appreciating or criticizing or condemning him why are you caring so much just to reform your ego we have used religion as a nation also to reform our ego a very act of patriotism patriotism sometimes we use it to affirm our ego in the name of patriotism which we are only affirming our ego we are ready to kill the enemy we are ready to kill the other person we made enemies now because it is the enemy of our nation so this is again collective ego far more dangerous than personal ego because this ego is completely blind at least personal ego it is some it is it is lot of times easy to recognize but collective ego is actually being treated as as a virtue and you don't even recognize it we forget that this is all man made right all religions are man made all nations are man made what you see as a boundary between two nations from the source he does not see any boundary it for for the source it is all one what you see as persons of two different nationalities for the source it is only one so it is man who divides different sects communities tribes 
nations, religions, or different. We use so many different angles to divide us, to separate us from each other. I promote this cricket team. You promote this cricket team. I, I promote this football team. You promote this football team. I belong to this club. You belong to this club. And two clubs are fighting with each other. Or two, so, so two, 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 um, we are re- and two, two teams. The very reason for sports is to be to 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 develop brotherhood and cooperation and to bring the countries together. Now we are ready to fight in the name of the sport. So for everything we use it as a collective ego to 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 wage a war. Political parties. The very thing which is supposed to give us democracy, freedom of speech, we are using it to 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 suppress those, to fight with each other. There's so much anonymity between political parties. Right? So so we use different tools, different angles, so many things to divide us, to separate from us, and that is the collective ego. So, you know, I'll give you an analogy in, the, in from the eyes of soul. So, like how man divides my party, your party, my religion, your religion, your nation, my nation, my, my team, your team. So, so but in, from the eyes of the source, there are only two. There are only two divisions. They are not one. They are not ten. They are not twenty. They are not thirty. From the eyes of the source, they only see two things. Those who are connected, those who are aligned to the source energy, and those who are not aligned. And those who are aligned are tuned in, tapped in, turned on. Tuned in, tapped, turned in, tapped on. They, they, they are constantly uh, drawing that energy. And those who are not aligned, they are living in that unconscious state. And that also the soul looks at it compassionately, not judging them, ready to help them. So choose, so, so use, so be conscious. Be conscious. Don't don't get fooled by the collective ego. Sometimes it is programmed by religion. It is programmed by nations. Reject that programming. Not anymore. So the seventh ego trait is of war. So first ego trait was complaining then resentment, then grievance, then being right, then defending your own truth, then sixth was collective ego, and seventh is war. Ego is ready to wage a war any time, is ready to fight. And war does not mean physical war. War is a mindset. War is a mindset. Whatever you fight, you strengthen, right? What you resist, you persist. Everything we're ready to work, everything what we, we, we want, even for the virtue, something we are ready to fight a war. We say war against poverty. The, the very act of the using the word or saying come from, coming from that vibration, war against poverty. I want to wage a war against poverty. I want to fight against poverty, war against drugs, war against crime, war against terrorism, war against cancer, and so on and so forth. And then that's why you see that you're not able to solve this problem. Because you're coming from the state of resistance. And what you resist, you persist. What you fight, you strengthen the more you attention you are giving it to it the more more you are the more you are uh, 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 focus what you focus on your expands 
the more you are feeding that experience mahatma gandhi din se war against violence he said non violence peace Mother Teresa. Somebody told Mother Teresa during the time of Vietnam War. Somebody told Mother Teresa that we are we are doing a a huge march, huge march for the war for 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 war against Vietnam. Would you join us? For a march for a march against the war in Vietnam. Would you join us? she said no but if it is a if, but if it is a march for peace i'll be happy to join peace is so inclusive when you say war against something march against something again you are dividing again there is a separation you are against something like how allopathy treats the disease right every every every, every symptom it treats as an enemy where the root cause remains but is treating the symptom as an enemy and that's why we create new diseases every few years we come out every 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 year we come out with some new diseases and that very very medicine creates some new disease in our body that's why einstein said you cannot solve the problem from the same level of mind that created it but ego loves war war ego loves the mindset of war to fight ready to fight any time and we use virtue we use virtue as a, as a, sometimes we use virtue for a reason to fight it's not helping anyone now i'll go to the next state of the ego ego is, is drama ego loves drama you create drama you create drama where this where this existed where there existed nothing but peace you love to create drama ego loves to justify attack blame defend you want and then you will fight till the end justify i am right attack blame defend i rather be right than at peace so ego loves drama ego always in the resistance of the current happening but honor the present happening anything that you accept completely will take you into peace so first if you honor the present happening it it loses its absolute seriousness its heaviness just honor it accept it so practice acceptance and allowance the ninth trait of the ego is wanting ego is always wanting ego is never satisfied with what whatever is the current moment whatever is the present moment ego always wants something so wanting keeps the ego alive if there is no wanting ego will feel restless so sometimes lot of times when you are meditating when you are peace you have absolutely no desire you are absolutely very content and peaceful all of sudden then you feel start feeling all of sudden something triggers and you start feeling restless 
is the ego. That is what the ego telling you. I want this. I want this. So wanting always keeps the ego alive. Otherwise, because the ego, you're not feeding your ego. So it will always separate. It will always separate you. Ego always separates us by prompting what's missing in your life. If you are at home, the ego will tell you, "Oh, it's so much time you spend in home. This home is killing me. It's it's coming on me. I need to travel somewhere." When you are traveling somewhere, you are working from the on the phone there. When you are holiday, you are you are busy with your work. When you are at work. you want to rush back to your house so it is always wanting it is never it is always resisting the present moment it is not, not never never happy with the current situation if you are with your children you are like oh my god i need peace i need some of my own time if you have own time or if you are traveling somewhere then you are missing your children If you're with your wife, you're missing your girlfriend. If you're with a girlfriend, now you're missing your wife. So, if you're if you're single, you want a relationship. When you have the relationship, then you want then you're so uninvolved in the relationship. So ego always when you when you have good food, then you want to diet. So ego always wanting something, right? If you're eating too much, then ego he will tell you how thin it is to be nicer. If you're skinny, then oh my god, I'm so skinny. I need I need more food, more nutrition. So always ego is always telling you what's missing in your life. So that is a basic trait of the ego. ego is always wanting and that keeps the ego alive stop wanting and your ego will feel restless so the next state of the ego is ego is governed by fear the underlining activity that governs all ego the underlining activity that governs all ego is fear when you had nobody when you had no money you had so much of insecurity the fear of 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 no money of, of poverty when you had money now you have a fear of losing money sometimes in meditation you 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 step you fear of the unknown because what if i become nobody what if i become no one i want i have a fear of losing my identity my personality self my analytical mind what if i drop my analytical mind what if somebody takes advantage of me so if ego always wants to live in fear the basic the basic uh, thing which fears ego or which keeps ego empowered is fear live in fear ego loves to feed on fear for life you live fear of dying fear of death ready to die now we we are dying every moment we are losing our very existence because of the fear of death We, we we always live in fear ego loves fear fear of non existence what if i am known by the society what by what what if i lose my social status what if i lose my reputation first you go wanted all those contents right the contents were things body and form when you get it then you have a fear of losing it 
first ego wanted all these things it identified with those things and now you have a fear of losing it and the beauty is we are we all our life we have a fear of death the beauty is you can't experience your own death the moment you are dead there is the, the ego is gone but you can't so the ego can't even experience his death but it wants to live in the fear of death the eleventh trait of the ego ego loves fame ego loves fame ego loves to be recognized by outside ego loves gratification from outside ego loves ego fe- feels that it it seeks fulfillment from outside ego wants to believe that all the happiness all this fulfillment come from outside But the truth is the more you seek fulfillment from outside the more you keep become alienated from your own self the more you lose connection with your own self and then you become more and more unhappy and we have seen that right we've seen so many examples of film stars politicians religious leaders i have met so many religious leaders who in or who silently tell me i heard you teach meditation tell me how to do it they don't know how to do med- meditation and they are the religious leader they form the huge cult huge following thousands lakhs of people are following them ego loves fame ego loves you you like to do name dropping oh i know this person ego loves that power that 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 um uh, that the illusion of power any conversation you want you love name dropping oh i know this person oh i know this person ego wants to show others that oh i am so influential you love to be influential you love to be in the uh, to to know the influential people but lot of times eventually does not give you content it does not give you fulfillment so success that's why success without fulfillment is ultimate failure that's why so many of these leaders lot of time it's so lonely at the top they are so lonely they are depressed they are so unhappy and then and then they always keep wanting right so even if you become the famous personality or the politician you still keep wanting ego still keeps wanting you still want more fame now you know what now what you still want some instant gratification then you go into alcohol your drugs become a chain smoker behind every addiction there is a there, there is a emotional addiction so ego loves that fame and when the and then when you get the fame you have a fear you have a fear of losing that fame any 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 uh, any negative comments or any negative you are so disturbed you are so anxious that's why even though even as you grow bigger as you grow more more uh, as you become more pow- powerful or more stronger more, uh, as you gain more fame we need to practice more humility practice radical humility radical humility more the, the, the more taller you are the more you bend your head right the same way it should be and the la- and then in the in the next one is ego resist the present moment the only thing the only thing ego do not want is the present moment ego hates present moment it always resists present moment 
That's why so many religions in Buddhism, they always talk about being the present moment. Accept the present moment. Embrace the present moment. Just being completely in the present moment will bring it to peace. Anything you accept fully will take you into peace. But the ego always resists present moment. You feel uneasiness, you feel boredom, you feel anxiety, restlessness, you feel so dissatisfaction. But what is life? Life is nothing but slices of present moment. The whole life consists of only slices of present moment. When there is nothing, everything is fine. You st- all of a sudden, you will start worrying about something, about some future. You will have some anxiety about something future. But ego wants it. Ego don't love peace. Ego wants something that you you resist the present moment. You have to now. Then you have to be either you have to be fear of the other either you are, you are fear of your past, or you are anxious about your future moment, or 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 worry about the future future moment. And worry always pretends to be necessary. Worry pretends to be necessary, but serves no useful purpose. At that moment, you are, you are compelled to believe, good, no, 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 it is so important for you to worry because you care about somebody. But it is serving no useful purpose. Right? Because when you are worrying, you are speculating the worst outcome. And what you feel about, you bring about, you are giving more energy to that and you, draw, you are increasing the probability of drawing more, that, or more of that situation into your life. You think you are you are caring about somebody, but but by doing that, by worrying, you are actually you are actually uh, not helpful to the situation. You are aggravating the situation. But but worry, ego health makes you believe that no, you have to worry. It pretends to be necessary. So for ego. Ego, the, the worst enemy is the present moment. Ego's present moment is the ego's greatest enemy. That's why you're never happy with the current moment. And that is how over a period of time you develop that your relationship with time. Your relationship with, with the present moment is always about never satisfied with the present moment. And that's why when you practice four pillars of manifestation, you practice satisfaction. Gratitude, appreciation, and acceptance of the present moment. Being satisfied by what it is and eager for more. That is the state. That is the state from which we are we are doing manifestation. Not resisting the present moment. Not feeling dissatisfied and discontent and lack and then trying to create a future. But ego always makes you to going into the state of resistance. You always think, no, when that happens, then I'll be happy. You always postpone your happiness for tomorrow. But you forget that when tomorrow you will experience, the only way you can experience tomorrow is in a form of present moment. And when that present moment comes, when that tomorrow comes in the form of present moment, again, you think of another tomorrow, another day after tomorrow. And you keep postponing, you keep postponing your happiness. That that when that happens, then I'll be happy. But that and, and it is not about that event, it is not about that situation. That will come to you. That you manifest that. Even though, though it comes into your life, it is, but, but the problem is you have developed that relationship with your time. The way you have developed a relationship with your time is always postponing your happiness to the next moment. Always the, your relationship with time is always being dissatisfied with the present moment, being resistant in the present moment. You always wait, waiting, waiting, you, that, that, that you always wait that no, tomorrow will be better.
no not not this not this moment next moment next moment next moment that's why you wait that's why you, it always keeps you in a waiting mode and that's why you're not able to have the right feeling for what you want to manifest in your life and that's why life is always buffering you're always in the buffering mode it will happen it is happen it is happen it will it is going to happen it's happening so waiting necessary means means waiting itself necessary means that you want the next moment and not this moment the the word when you say waiting i'm waiting waiting necessary means that you 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 want the next moment and not this moment the very word waiting means you are resisting the to the present moment that's why you are waiting for the next moment so don't wait don't wait for things to get better life will always be complicated trust me don't wait for things to get better life will always be complicated learn to be happy right now learn to be happy right now otherwise you will run out of time remember remember today is the tomorrow you dreamed about yesterday today is the tomorrow that you dreamed about yesterday and now today is that tomorrow which you thought about will come it is it is day today so embrace it drop the resistance so no always know that it is the trait of the ego which is always resisting present moment so become aware next slide the third is then the 13th is ego yeah yeah okay show you can share the next slide yeah ego is always alone ego always likes to be alone ego feels lonely even though you have all your friends your relations everything ego love ego loves feeling lonely and that's why ego always need distraction when you are when you are there by yourself ego start feeling lonely the moment you have your time in private ego starts feeling lonely loneliness is a pain of being alone solitude is a pleasure of being alone so that's why when you feel lonely you always need distraction and you, you have, now we have the best distraction our mobile phones so so again again are you enjoying your your time with yourself are you your best friend or if 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 you are not enjoying your time with yourself if you are you are being being your on your with your own bothers you you feel restless that means you have to find your own connection that means you have to focus on your relationship with yourself eventually all relationship is how you relate with yourself right all the relationship is only the reflection so ego loves ego loves ego enjoys to take, to make you believe that oh you are alone you need somebody you need some distraction the truth is you are enough all that you need is alive in you the one you are looking for is you in 14th is ego always love to seek approval ego feels very lonely ego never believes in itself ego is very weak right because ego the, the very trait of the ego the very trait of the ego is when you are in a ego when you are in a state of ego you disconnect from your source energy 
So now you're not getting the energy from the source, right? So now, how does the ego feed itself? By all these 16 traits. By all these traits, by getting, by seeking, by seeking all these things so that it keeps feeding the ego. Because, because it has no, it is no, no own source of energy. It is not connected to your source, which is your perennial source, which is your renewable energy, which is your ever ready resource. The very act of ego, the moment you're in the ego, you separate from your own, own inner, inner alignment. You separate, it separates you from the inner alignment. So the ego always, the 14 traits is ego always, that's why seeks approval. Does things only for the approval of others. So that's why it always seeks constant attention. It needs constant verification. If you're, if, if you're not getting attention, you feel restless. If you're not getting verification for whatever you're doing, you feel you feel uneasy. You feel you feel you feel as if as if the as if the fish is fish is out of the water. So she always does things to prove to others through some work or service or some action. That's why Rumi said, half of your life is lost in charming others. Other half is lost in, in going through anxieties caused by others. Leave this play. You have played enough. view your life with your, without any external reference. Become your own yardstick. The only way we should measure ourselves is to keep yourself as your own yardstick. Regardless that you achieve or, or gain that lofty goal set by others or not, regardless of that outcome, you are perfect the way you are. You complete you. So that's why I told you, right? I am, I am not what I think I am. I am not ego. Ego does not believe what you really are. I am not what I think I am. I am not what you think I am. I, I am what I think you think I am. So it's all about, about what, how I believe about your perception about me and that is what I believe. So ego always seeks approval. And that is a very trait of ego. So again, recognize that. The 15th is ego loves stealing energy. Ego loves stealing energy from others. Ego loves to steal energy. The 15th trait it steals energy. Right? We are talking about the whole family dramas, right? Integrator, intimidator, perpetrator, aloof, victim, poor me, all these dramas we play. And the more you feed that ego through these dramas, the more addictive it becomes. Need, it needs the drama more, it needs the drama to be more, more dramatized. The same level of drama does not now satisfy the ego anymore. It's like cigarette, you know, first you start with one cigarette, then you start with two cigarettes. Then you slowly you realize you need a pack. So ego loves to, because the same level of energy is no more, no more, no more satisfying the ego. So it, ego loves to steal. Now you want to steal more energy. Now you want to create a bigger drama. That's what that's what terrorism is. Eventually, they like to create a bigger drama, so that this steals energy from the from the from the consciousness, from from the from a group from a whole group of consciousness. So ego loves to steal energy because it is not connected to the source energy. So how does it drive energy? Again, by stealing from others. If 
somebody has no food to eat, what will you do? You are ready to steal from somebody because you need to survive. So it is, it is, it is, it is, it is the for ego, it's the very survival. To steal energy. Otherwise, how will ego survive? So ego loves stealing energy. And the last state of the ego, and the last state of the ego is ego is unconscious. Friends, there's nothing wrong with the ego. Ego isn't wrong. It is just that it is just unconscious. The ego itself does not know about itself. The ego isn't wrong, it's just unconscious. So there, it's not that the ego is bad. We need this ego. I kept my foundation name Shans Daga Foundation so that people can relate with me. People know who am I. So that I can connect with others. So it's not like, it's not like he, oh, I want to feed my ego, Ushayas Daga Foundation. It's about, so you need, unless there's a name, how would you know who it is, who is, who is, who is, who is, who is there? Unless you know, unless you know about yourself, unless you, uh, you put your name, how can you, how can you operate in this world? So it is not that the ego is wrong. There's no problem with the ego. We need it to, to function in this three dimensional reality. But it's just that we need to become conscious of our ego. Because it is unconscious. Ego implies unawareness. Ego implies unawareness. We are not aware. And all these 16 traits are the basic traits of the ego. And every time it is recognized, every time it is recognized, it is weakened. Every time you recognize, the moment you recognize, you become separate from your ego. The very act of recognize, recognition means now you're a witness as a third person. From a different dimension you're seeing, from a higher dimension, you're seeing it from a different dimension. And every time it is recognized, it is weakened. That's why awareness is the key agent for change. Buddha said, seeing is freeing. The very act of seeing will free yourself, will, will, will free you from that. So whenever you, whenever you observe it in you, it will lose its intensity. You'll be able to go beyond. That's why the more conscious you are, you, you are of your unconscious. The more conscious you are of your unconscious ego, the less unconscious you'll go during the course of the day. That's why we all talk about mindfulness. After meditation, mindfulness. Mindfulness is the practice. Uh, meditation is the practice. And mindfulness is the test. And manifestation is the result. So two test is mindfulness. And, and become a very conscious person. And that's why when you have, you, that's why they say you can never have an argument. You can never have an argument with a fully conscious person. Because fully conscious person is aware of its ego. Then how can you argue with that person? Because he will not identify with your unconsciousness, with your unconscious state. He will not identify with your ego state. So you can never have an argument with a fully conscious person. Because the fully conscious person knows that he can never win an argument with that person. If he, if he gets into an argument, he'll never win. Because that's not his trait. That is not his personality. Mark Twain said, never argue with the stupid people. They will, they will bring you down to their level and beat you with their experience. And the fully conscious person know that he, I cannot, I cannot match his experience. I'm not ready to, 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 to be pulled down by that person. 
and that's why you choose not to identify with your with your with with uh, with your belief systems with your unconscious state with your ego traits the last thing i want to say about ego traits is don't take don't take your ego too seriously the moment you recognize it laugh at it smile even laugh don't take it too seriously it's fine as a part of human understanding as a part of our human experience we needed it but now all that you and, and if you recognize it again don't take it seriously the moment you recognize itself is the fact it is weakened but ne- now next time you know that i'll be more away is not there's no problem with the ego if you take ego to be a personal problem then that then then then, then, then that just more ego if you take ego to be a personal problem then it's just more ego so there's nothing wrong with the ego it's just unconscious all we need is to become conscious become aware and that's why seeing is freeing so thank you so here i complete all the 16 traits of the ego i would like to start with next one so maybe i'll take go on for another 15 minutes rashi is that okay Yes, yes, perfect, perfect. Please. So far, okay. So far, so good. Exam. Very nice. Very nice. It was fantastic. Uh, Kishan, next slide. Now I'll talk about the role playing. The ego plays different roles. The ego plays in our life. or the role playing as a ego we do different role playing and a lot of times we need that role there's nothing wrong wrong with that role but just we need to recognize that so first role the ego plays is of is is, is a villain as a perpetrator we we know how as a perpetrator you steal energy right so ego loves to be a perpetrator ego loves mis- so, so we do we play often times we play a role of a perpet- perpetrator in our life so ego misbehaves to get attention force of loudness ego uses the force of loudness threaten somebody physically or verbally because they need to be the center stage and in more extreme versions you even commit crime That's how you, we we become criminals. What are what are they trying to tell? What are the criminals trying to tell? They are trying to say that oh that I am that, that that to the world that please that that I am not insignificant. But I am not insignificant. I exist. That is what the ego wants you to tell you, and you become a perpetrator. and either either in both are coming from the ego whether it is superiority complex or inferiority so either you have their superiority complex or it is coming from the inferiority complex and both are coming from the ego so the first role playing ego does of of the many role playings one of the role playing which ego does is of of a perpetrator or a villain villain the second is you can uh, share the slide sorry for the spelling mistake yeah perpetrator okay so yeah the so second is victim the ego loves to play a poor me attitude a victim attitude right and we have spoken a lot about poor me victim because it wants to now seek steal energy it it wants to feel feel say sympathy self pity always complaining all most of the time we are offended 
you know when you're offended with something it is nothing but your victimhood you go loves to be into the into the role of victimhood outraged by any small incident and you're so outraged you feel so offended and you're now you're now you're outraged so what's going on in your mind me and my story you created a story in your mind and in that role in that role and by it's a role you're playing and at that moment actually you lose so much of your power because you feel powerless you want to play this role so it is actually coming out of a inferior inferiority complex you feel inferior to others and that's why you play these kind of victim poor me roles that's why you feel guilty make others feel guilty about you in every guilt every guilt is a fresh blunder ego loves to play this role of a victim mode of a poor me to feel to have sympathy to seek self pity guilt shame complaining offended outraged ego loves this third is a lover a role of a lover actually what happens when you fall in love falling is in love is actually intensification of ego wanting and needing at that moment both the egos are intensified at that moment and you both are in love with each other and that's where you, your ego is wanting and needing from each other you fulfill me i fulfill you i will play for who you want me to be and you will play what i want to be and then it is coming from the sometime most of the times we think we are falling in love we think it is true love but actually it is not true love it is coming from the state of wanting and in subconsciously you both make an agreement at that time ki i will play who you want me to be and you will play what what i want you to be and we both are playing that and that's why it's so fulfilling for the time being both are feeding each other's needs and that's why it feels so fulfilling for the time being but then the time comes slowly when we are not able to feed each other or the same need is not able to still fill now we need more from each other and then you fail each other and then you wonder where the love has gone but the truth is the true love does not need any wanting the true love has to be come out of the completeness of each other you complete yourself she completes yourself he completes himself and now we are sharing our completeness then we are appreciating our own differences we don't want to change each other we don't try to change each other so true love doesn't need any wanting so sometimes ego play, uh, goes you into the play into the role playing of a lover a lot of times it is also coming from the place of ego from the place of intensification of ego <clears throat> then fourth is your self definitions so you know we give so many self definitions to ourselves and which is important which is important to play that role right uh, sometimes we need to play those roles so like like when so like like you, i i am a farmer or i am a trader Oh, I am an army officer. I am a doctor. I am a lawyer. I am a boss. I am a subordinate. I am a housewife. I am an artist. I am a performer. We play different roles, right? And we need to play those roles at that time, right? A doctor needs to play that role as a doctor. But the problem happens is when you are playing the role, we become unconscious. When you play that role, you are unconscious. you forget that you are just playing that role if you are a politician or if you are a leader of a party you forget that it is just a role you are playing for the temporary time for the temporary situation for the temporary period of time but you act only out of that role it's just a role but 
we forget that it's a role. We forget we identify so much with that role that that we that that, that we, we become intertwined with that role. You're not born as a farmer. You're not born as a trader. You're not born as a doctor. You're not born as a lawyer. You you develop that trait, right? And you're now for the sake sake of your livelihood and your profession, you are playing that role. It's a role you are playing. But you give it absolute seriousness to your role. So perform your roles, whatever role you are performing at whatever stage of time, whatever stage in your life. Perform your roles with a Santa Claus energy. Know that it's a role. How how an actor goes into the movie, perform that role, and come back. He does not. He knows that he's just acting in the movie. He's just acting. He's just doing that role. The same way, you are only acting that role. You are only enacting that role. So perform your roles with a Santa Claus energy. Spontaneity. Have that spontaneity. Lightheartedness. Enjoy should be the part of your role. it should be fun you love what you're doing then why not enjoy it have happy have fun have light heartedness know that it's just a role know that you are you are just you are much bigger than what than this role this is only a limited part of that human experience that role playing so self definitions so one of the role is self definitions right now the fifth role the ego plays is of a temporary roles to so during the course of the day again in the same same day we played so many roles as a temporary roles right so sometimes you are a customer you go to a shop or a restaurant now you are the customer now the moment you are a customer again you take your role so seriously you forget that it's a temporary role the moment your customer again your ego identifies with that customer role you demand good service i have ordered my food since last 20 minutes how can you take so much time how can the air hostess be so rude to me as a airline passenger now you need demand service all of sudden your ego is magnified because you are a airline passenger you are sitting in a business class you deserve this service but then the role keeps changing the moment you meet a senior politician all of a sudden you are so humble you are so gentle you are so soft you are standing with your folded hands again the ego is playing these roles so you keep playing your role depending on who is on the other side you identify with your role you identify more identified you are the move you are with your respective roles the more inauthentic the more in the more inauthentic the relationship begins the becomes the more identified with you are with your respective roles the more inauthentic the relationship be- becomes if you want your relationship to be authentic then you in your then you should be very clear to see each other as equals they are playing their role you are playing your role but from the source perspective we are all equals sometimes you are the customer sometimes you are on the other side sometimes you are serving your customer so we see we should see each other as equals neither inferior neither superior even if he is your servant he is he is doing his job you are paying him for the service he is providing so how is it inferior to you he is playing his role you are playing his role there is no favor to each other so see each other as equals so understand that it's a temporary role and we keep playing different roles at different times but the moment we get into that role we identify so much so again this is a role the ego ego is playing a role playing so don't identify with your ego with that specific role playing so seriously 
It's very temporary, temporary it's very transitory. The sixteenth is the, the sixth role is happiness. We play happiness as a role. So we are conditioned from that society always be happy. Showing any of your weak side, being showing your vulnerability is your weakness. So even though you are vulnerable inside, even though you are sad inside, but you carry a facade. You want to carry that happiness. I am always happy. You may be depressed at home, but you want that you go to the party and pretend to be so happy. But the true happiness is the freedom from unhappiness is happiness. Freedom from unhappiness is happiness. That is the true happiness. A lot of times when you keep pretending, when you keep pretending, eventually it leads to depression. It leads to breakdown. It leads to outburst or overreaction. Here, a lot of times you hear, right? Some one of the fam famous film stars, you hear, oh, they committed suicide. Because a lot of times, for a long time, you play happiness as a role. But deep down, you're so unhappy. To so stop playing the role, be authentic, be genuine. Only when you're authentic, then you'll recognize it and you'll work on it. And actually, your happiness is your natural state. So even when you when you recognize that you're unhappy, it's not that that you're unhappy. Don't say I'm unhappy. There is unhappiness in me, which I need to work on. And the tr truth is, the primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation. The primary cause of unhappiness is never the situation, but your thought forms about it. How you interpret the situation, that, that, that gives you unhappy. So don't play happiness just as a role. Are you truly happy? Are you really have a freedom from unhappiness? The seventh role the ego plays is of parenthood. Shall I stop now? I can take it tomorrow then. Yeah. Yeah, now tomorrow. Yeah, let me take it tomorrow too. Yeah. Yes. 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 Thank you so much. Again, a very eye opener session. And I uh, loved it when you uh, said that there's happiness. We, we can't say we are happy. We have to work upon the happiness which we already have. Right. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. Thank you so much. And we go for our QA's. Um, thank you so much, friends. For being here, showing your patience and slide. listening. Can you share the slide. Kesha, can you share the slide? The both the slides, the sixteen uh, uh, ego traits first. Oh, oh, we'll share the slides in the group. Friends, we'll share the slides in the group. Yeah, both the sixteen ego traits and the role playing. All the slides we'll share in the group. Yeah, we'll share it tomorrow in the groups. Yeah. Smriti? Yeah. yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, it's so much, so much, uh, no, no words for expression as always. Uh, Shreyans? Thank you, Smriti. Yes, go ahead, go ahead, Smriti, we can hear you. Yeah. Unmute yourself. It's already unmuted. Smriti, please go ahead. Uh, Payal Gupta. Rashi, uh, I would like you to take, you know, if those people have not gotten a chance. If you see same yes. name and try to, try to see yes. them and uh, uh, try to let's give other people also a chance to hear. Yeah. Yes. Hello. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good 
Pile, we lost you. Just say, where are you from? What you do? Yeah. Pile, Okay, so we go to the next then. Yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. 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 I'm really grateful to Shriyans for this wonderful workshop. And uh, my question is that it has really helped me change my life and the situation where I was stuck. And uh, another question, the question I have is that I'm living separately from my husband since last eight years. And like he's not uh, supporting the children and me financially. So there's a lot of resentment. How do I go about it? I have not been able to forgive him for what he did or what he's doing, not doing. You know, I've given you so many tools and techniques and identifications of everything. All you need is to practice. We have med meditations about heal your relationship, forgiveness as a tool, and uh, how others unconscious state we identify. You have to just do it. I mean, there's no, it's, you have to do your own push-ups, you know, there's no one word line answer actually. You know? Yeah, that is true. I'm working on it. Yeah, there's a lot we have covered. And again, we are going to cover in next few days also, which will again give you more clue. And now you have to find your own solution. Once you find your own alignment, then you'll know what to do. Yeah. Thank you so much. And I would really like to be part of the future workshops or if I can volunteer in any way. Lovely. Yes, please write it to us. Pile. And last day we'll announce for those who love to volunteer or who love to associate so that we can uh, continue our journey together and help each other. Yeah. Right. Thank you so much. It's really Thank wonderful. You. Thank you, Pai. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jagdeep Ji Sambhavni. Yeah, please unmute. Yeah, please go ahead. Good morning, Shyam. Thank you very much. Uh, you have been wonderful. Very, very, very impressive. Out today's uh, session uh, regarding the ego, uh, you are hundred percent right. The only thing uh, what uh, I'm not uh, aligned with the thing when you said that as a country, a country going to the war, the war, the war factor. You are born in a country. Uh, you you have got an identity with the country itself. Out. Uh, brightness with the country. If somebody attacks you out, you have, you are not doing anything wrong. You are defending yourself. You are not going war uh, perpetually on your own. But if you, you are forced to go on, you have been trying to address all the things. Same thing like for terrorists and all other things. Out. Uh, it's in the human nature uh, that they do not want to understand by way of dialogue or anything out. If somebody attacks you, you have to defend. So, by, uh, so where is the question of ego coming into it? The ego doesn't uh, provokes you to go to war. Honestly, I have no answer because I am very much talking from the state of consciousness. From the, I mean, it's, it's a yeah. choice. You can argue this. But uh, from from uh, but that, that, that's why we're not able to solve any situation, right? That's why we're always fighting. That's why we're not able to bring peace to the world. If if yeah. if we could bring peace, then why we are not finding uh, peace? So it is it is it is it is a collective consciousness which we need to change. If the person who is attacking and the one who is Absolutely, I totally agree with that. So means uh, what uh, what is not there in your hand, you cannot do anything. You have to keep on trying and trying out. But at the same time, you have to defend yourself. Also. This is what my say. Your wife. Sorry. Your, there was a mute out. Uh, your voice was gone. This was the, my, my main purpose out. Because once you renounce the ego, then uh, that means you let go of the ego, then you're renouncing the everything out. It's like uh, you are becoming Buddha. Buddha also, uh, when he uh, he was a prince out before renouncement, he fought, and he fought, and he then made them understand by his uh, uh, enlightenment out, and uh, uh, the war stopped over. There. It is everything on the perceive, uh, perception of a uh, human being, how they read it and how they handle it. Out. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Next. Yeah, Vilashi Kumar, 
Please unmute. Kash Kumar, yeah. Prikash Kumar, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Shreyans. Thanks a lot for enlightening sessions. A lot of clarity we are getting. Uh, I just had one query. So it was asked by somebody else also in the group. So there are a lot of small businessmen who take, you know, small amount of debt to build something. Losses come, debts go larger, more losses, more debts. So they get into a trap. So how do you, and, and then it becomes very difficult to gather thoughts and all, you know, so how do you suggest in such difficult circumstances, how people gather themselves and, you know, go stronger in their business? So, you know, I've talked about in the manifestation sessions, right? How we, we have to, at that moment, that's why meditation, so that we withdraw from the current situation and then visualize what you want to have in your life, what you want to produce, the kind of situation you want to produce in your life. So, so because what is, what is, we take what is, is so stronger that it is stopping you to, 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 from your vision of what you can be. What is, is so, so, so dominant in your vibration that by doing that, by, by focusing so much on that, what is, or, or the, what on the current reality, we are, we are losing our vision of what we can be. We are losing the sight of what we can be, but that is why we need to withdraw from what is and visualize what we what you want to be what you and, and as if it's already happening in the present moment and that's why we have all these tools and techniques the whole visualization creative visualizations can, uh, and meditation and creative visualization is a powerful tool to 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 work on this situation sure thank you thank you thank you thank you so much uh, k padmalatha ji please unmute Uh, Shel Sharma. Hi, good morning. Good morning, Shriyan. Good morning, Rajshri. Uh, see, I'm driving right now. Uh, just give me one moment. I'll, I'll park my car in a side drive. Uh, just one second. Yeah, sorry. Uh, see, I'm a teacher, right? Um, I'm from Faridabad. So, um, oh, what I see, you know, um, among these teenagers, like, you know, after these COVID situations, lots of problems are there. Um, you understand what sort of problems, right? Yeah. Lots yeah. of impatience. And so the, whatever knowledge, you know, I've gained in these sessions, I want to impart all this knowledge to, to the students. What would be the appropriate age group where, can I, uh, where I can start with? Any age. Even at the age of... Asin, both, won't it be a very... We can start teaching them five minutes meditation, you know? And teachers, as a teacher, they can play such an important role for their emotional intelligence, right? Because that is what will give them resilience when they go out in the world. That is, will, will increase their adaptability quotient. As an as a education system, we teach them how to be successful, but we don't teach them how to handle failure. But that is where we can, as teachers, can play such an important role to also teach them resilience. And that's where med meditation, emotional intelligence plays such an important role. And you can start at even at the age of five, just maybe two minutes meditation, three minutes meditation. Start with their meditation. And you don't know, I mean, they are all evolved beings. They are so, they are so old souls, which are coming this new generation. It's just that, the, it's just that the moment you experience it, they are looking for experience. The moment they experience it, you will be surprised. You, you will be surprised how they will transform. And 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 and, and initially, it will start with two person in the class sharing his experience. But his experience will 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 change everybody's uh, mindset. They will understand. Oh, what could be the possible? How how meditation can be so helpful? So start with meditation in the class. You know. Uh, see, I'm dealing with age group like 16, 17, 18 years, right? So you can say they are quite grown up uh, ones. Um, many of them, they have asthma, some have, you know, anxiety, some have panic attacks, so which I can't, you know, see, I, I feel that, you know, at the, such a young age, they are suffering so much, so they should come out of this. So it, it's not that I'm not teaching them meditation. Meditation, you know, um, every day I start my class with five minutes of meditation, but somehow that's not helping because at that age, you know, they work with their logical mind. They want the science behind everything, that meditation, and why should they meditate? Give so them that's the, why exactly. So give them the science of meditation. And I've shared with you in many ways the science of meditation. So so share with them how meditation really helps. So these slides means five, five minutes, maybe 
throughout the year it will go will that be okay yeah it's fine a make a specific class not just with children also with their parents make a specific make a specific make make take a workshop maybe call the parents and the children together in the workshop you know maybe right. maybe call the more than the children first the parents is education so to keep a workshop for the parents so that they can also practice and then they will also teach their children at home all right so just you know small small uh, things i'll collect from your presentation and then yeah. that right yeah 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 okay and so, with, if you want to share the slides i'll be happy to share it with you so please yeah yeah so um how can i get those slides just mail it to me just mail mail me to me mail mail to me i'll all right, I'll... All right fine it will be a great help thank you so much thank you, thank thank you. you. Yeah, thank you. Yes, thank you. Uh, K. Padmalatha ji, please unmute. Uh, Rajesh ji, please unmute. Am I audible? Yes. Yeah, please go ahead. Oh, uh, namaskar, uh, Shreyansh ji and uh, Rajesh ji. Uh, actually my question was answered uh, by the uh, question raised by uh, samjwani ji actually yeah. uh, i am really 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 so, so thankful to the whole team of uh, pyramid valley and uh, pyramid valley international also uh, it all started with my journey started with the uh, 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 2019 global fest and that was that was like a turning point of my life and uh, that's what i want to thank you so much uh, gratitude gratitude and gratitude immensely rajesh thank you where are you from and what you do i i i am from bangalore only and yeah. uh, i uh, deal in quartz crystals sir oh lovely wow nice so the thank you again sir thank you so much thank you so much god bless all thank you thank you uh, thank you abadri prashad Please unmute. Yeah, please go ahead, sir. Yeah, very good morning, uh, Shyam sir, and very good morning, uh, Ms. Rajshree. Shyam sir, today's topic was very profound, and it was so relevant for the day's events. In fact, uh, the current events are uh, me. I'm from Davangere, Karnataka, and uh, the present situation, the present, the events which are happening, I was very, very deeply disturbed. Uh, because these things shouldn't have percolated to the school level so religions were supposed to uh, religion is supposed to mean a journey towards within not saying my i am superior or you are super uh, my this thing is so my beliefs are superior to your beliefs and things like that but it was very disturbing what you said like i was getting a little clarity like i just wanted to ask is there a possibility that we meditate and manifest for a global peace so that better sense prevails can we have a collective meditation session to promote this thoughts among the uh, people every time you meditate every time you meditate not only you raise the vibration you raise the vibration of the whole consciousness yes right okay so many experiments done on meditation where they are able to stop war when a group of people meditated there yes the vibration influence that so of course meditation is group meditation is so powerful and it raises the whole vibration of the area the place wherever you have a intention to you can direct as a group so so it's always helpful and you can join as a group or collectively make a group and meet it together with that intention it's always helpful yeah yeah and uh, second thing uh, well, that coming from the state not from the state of focus on the peace not on the violence or not on the issues yeah, yeah. focus Very on true. what you want to see in that world not what is existing and what oh my god I mean, maybe I'm, the meditation is not about fight against that or yeah. war against that right meditation but, is for peace yeah yeah and uh, one more question what i had was like uh, the other day we had a, we ha we had a topic about the cymatics i mean the effect of the sound yeah. i found that very very interesting and uh, see most of many of the times we uh, sit for the sit and meditate with our headphones because uh, the sound generated reaches only our uh, eardrums right only our uh, ears 
so will it affect the whole body like for example if i am uh, playing the, the, the uh, yeah yeah you are all connected absolutely it's fully connected so so no worries it will affect the whole body yeah yeah and uh, secondly uh, see when uh, the, there are certain uh, music uh, clippings which say uh, uh, cleanse your negativity from your home cleanse your negative in the environment so would you advise that i play it on a open speaker and so that uh, the vibrations are received physically to all the uh, area i leave it to you because i mean it may help it may not help not help i don't know a lot of times a lot of these meditations are marketing tools you know so that you go know, and and uh, i've seen few are effective few are not so so you can try and experiment it's always good to experiment why not you know okay 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 thank you thank you thank you thank you, you. you. madhuji mishra please unmute hello uh, let me show my face also uh one second i got it here uh, hello uh, how are you uh, namaskar uh, shyamsi i am very very totally indebted and full of gratitude and i'm so thankful for my relatives who asked me to join these sessions i joined it in the middle of the session but i've learned a lot and like you i think about life without borders to have the same feelings for everybody treat everybody equal but uh, in this egoistical world where there's so many people who the only weapon they have is egos how does one actually get through with that and maintain to be you know keeping your own ideology with us the way i believe how would you say and i know the things which you have said uh, would help me but i just wanted to ask you what would be a daily routine for dealing with somebody who's very egoistical the best way to deal is to not to deal with them <laughs> but sometimes it's unavoidable change, so. change yourself only our only power is to change us and and that's why gandhi ji said be the change that we want to see in the world if everybody change themselves if everybody cleans the sweep their own floor the world will be the cleaner place so it's about it's about ourselves the whole journey is about ourselves others are only reflection and use it as a reflection how that that can help you to further clean yourself and your self the change will your change will inspire them it is your change which will inspire them so it is your once you raise your vibration it is your vibration which will which is infectious which is which is contagious so so it will automatically inspire them right so most of the communication is non verbal right one buddha transformed the whole world even 2500 years later we are still practicing his meditation we still get inspiration from that person so it's not about one person it is about so 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 it is about your change once you transform once you change it any that will inspire others and of course you can help them to guide them to do meditation like how your relatives guided you to join this workshop so same way you can guide them to do some workshops or meditations or read some books give them with that but eventually it's their choice but of course you can give them the right guidance but that's all you can do about it at the end that finally to change or not to change is their choice to 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 accept the guidance or to reject that guidance is also their choice and you honor it and you respect that thank you very much very good advice and i work as a criminal court interpreter sometimes the adverse situations are beyond our control but all these things will really surely help me uh, to move closer to these goals what we are looking to attain thank you ma'am where are you thank based you. i am in new jersey Okay, lovely, lovely. Okay. Thank you, thank you very much. And you are extremely, extremely powerful with your words, your choice of words. I'm making notes, and I listen to it again. And believe me, it's going to make a lot of changes. I'm sure in me and in a lot of other people. Are we all trying to overcome our ego and take all these kind of paths which you've told us to do? Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, K. Padmanatha ji, please go ahead.
Hello, ma'am. Yeah, please go ahead. Are you listening? Yes, yes. Please go ahead. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, hi, Shreyan, sir. Yeah, hi. Hi, Prasanna. Lots of love and gratitude to you, sir. And we are very thankful for your session. And it's doing amazing. Great. No words. Thank you. Where are you from? Uh, India? I'm from Andhra Pradesh, sir. Yeah. Uh, it's an amazing am session and it's an eye opening for every corner, from every corner. Thank you. And one doubt, sir, you are do you are doing us. Uh, we are doing affirmations in meditation. You are making us to do that. Uh, what is my doubt is is when we are in deep meditation. Isn't that the affirmations? Isn't that mind is working there? My doubt is that. Yeah, but that is my intention in meditation to to re, to rewire your mind with those affirmations. So sometimes, so, so when you don't want anything, then of course you can do anapansati or just silent meditation. Mm, yeah. More like this is more like a, a priming your brain for that issue. That's why it's an intentional meditation, right? You want to work on healing your relationship. That's why the the so, and that's why you are doing that. But if you want just just simple, just go into the emptiness. Uh, then the best is anapansati meditation, where just emptying your mind, yeah, no thoughts, become thoughtless. Okay. And sometimes okay. you can even do silent meditation. You don't need anything else, no guidance at all, just being in that silence, which is okay. also amazing. Yeah. We we can do in two three sessions in a day in in this way. Uh, yeah. One once a time silent meditation, once a time affirmations meditation. Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Utpalaji Thakkar. Can you please unmute? Smriti ji. Can you hear me? Yes, please go. Ahead. Yeah. Thank you for giving me chance to speak. Uh, this is, uh, I think, second time or third time. Uh, I'm very thankful, Shreyans. And uh, I wanted to share on your birthday and after doing that Connect to Show Source and Breathwork meditation, both on the same day, uh, a poem happened. I mean, I the words fell so beautifully. I just wanted to share if uh, given a chance. Uh, Can please. I? Yeah, yes. yeah. 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 In our journey, uh, who am I and where am I? Searching myself from somebody to nobody, no one, nothing, nowhere, no time, and no form to only constant presence, wider than the widest. Deeper than the deepest in this cosmic well, all the time with soundless sound, no going, no coming, no outer, no inner, but only one whole oneness everywhere. Where am I? Oh, I am everywhere. Everybody, only love energy in each cell, dancing and vibrating, hugging and loving itself all the time. Oh, I am the entire universe, an entire universe in me. My beloved and my beloved viewers, this Valentine season, who wishes whom, who loves whom, where there are no two. So this is what uh, is the magic of uh, uh, all these meditations where, uh, uh, you know, after a long, long time, I could, uh, you know, the poem happened. Yeah. Or my teenage and uh, earlier days, I used to write poems. A poem used to happen, but somehow it had lost. And this came out. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, I mean, uh, uh, it's so much gratitude to all the, I mean, uh, your sessions. But now, after listening to relationship and this ego, it's the only thing we have to do is practice, practice, and practice. There are so many things that one has to work on oneself. So thank, thank you once again. Thank you, thank you so much. Well, no.
Yes. Please go ahead. Yeah, Anand. Hello. Yeah. yeah. Good morning, Shyams and Rajeshri. I am from Belgaum in Karnataka. So I am very happy to say that indeed we are, I am very thankful to your team, uh, you and Rajeshri. So I am very happy to say that today I am in Bangalore. I am visiting Pyramid Valley. Oh, I have manifested that uh, I'm we are going to have a pyramid in at my place at Belgaum, and mm -hmm. I'll get connected to you. I'm sure I'll make this pyramid at my place. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Have a nice day. So great. Yes. Sir. What do you do, Thank sir? You. What do you do? I am on the VTU. I'm a panelist on the VTU University Executive Council member, and I was in Bombay for uh, 15 years. I'm an industrialist also. Now oh. I'm back to Belgaum. Mm -hmm. I'll get connected to you, Shayans. Yes. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a good trip to Pyramid Valley today. Yes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, Rishali ji. Yeah, last one, yeah, Rishali. Last, last, last. Yes. Yes, please go ahead. Yeah, I'm audible. Yeah. Hey, Rishali. Hi, Shans. Hi, uh, uh, Rajeshri. Um, Actually, I'm uh, I'm into meditation since two years. I've got connected uh, with uh, Pyramid Valley International uh, uh, through uh, Chandra sir. Nice. Uh, my question is uh, not related to the current topic. Uh, it's related to my. Uh, it's related to childrens of uh, like age uh, starting from three to four, three three onwards actually. Yeah. Uh, I heard uh, uh, there are there are. <clears throat> Uh, there are sessions uh, for midbrain activation or so. Yes, yes. So is it is it really uh, worth having those or? Yeah, it's good. Very good. It's good. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as in as in there are there are techniques. <coughs> there are <laughs> sorry. There are actually uh, uh, many organizations who does this uh, midbrain activation for kids on uh, kids like from age of five onwards. Yes, it's very so, good. So, uh, I just wanted to, yeah, I just wanted to check: is it really uh, worth doing that, and it's it's really exist or not? You know, it really exists. My kids have done it, and I've seen uh, amazing results in Pyramid Valley. We sometimes even organize that, so it's good. Please go ahead. Yeah, it's nice. Okay, okay. So, is it good to have at age four as well? Because yeah. I heard it starts from five onwards. No, which I mean, of course, I mean, depends on their class. If they they are able to take it, it's fine. You know, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, just wanted to uh, cross check with you so that uh, I should be going for it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And if your sessions are really chance and uh, a way of explanation and way of uh, showing the pressure and all like the uh, word, the word doing it, it's really very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for all your sessions. We generally have sessions which conduct for the So it's really good. Thanks and gratitude to you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, Shans, we uh, conclude here. And yes. thank you so much for the mind blowing sessions, what you're giving us, uh, the way you give us your knowledge, and with so much simplicity, so much innocence, and uh, so much true hearted. Thank you so much. There's one uh, uh, one quote from somebody from the chat. Uh, it is uh, Shraddha ji. I would like to uh, read her words. Your words reverberates all the time, make us shed all our layers and see our true divine. With your preachings, we will very soon touch our very core. These sacred mantras are for sure making our hearts sore. So blessed we are to have you as our master. So blessed are we to have you as our master. You have indeed filled our lives with joy and laughter. Shraddha ji, you've written it very beautifully. Well, this is for you, Shreya. I've got her a mail also. She has written so beautifully. So thank you, Shraddha. Thank you so much. Lovely. Awesome. Yes, I I, I couldn't just stop myself from her words. And uh, today with the uh, second day of our anatomy of ego, make your ego porous.
Will is of little importance. Complaining is unnecessary. Fame is nothing. Openness, patience, receptivity, solitude is everything. That's what you teach us. When ego is lost, limit is lost. You become kind, beautiful, and infinite. So it was beautiful. And one more thing coming from me is Sabko ikatta rakhne ki taakat prem hai. Sabko ikatta rakhne ki taakat prem hai. Sabko alag rakhne karne ki taakat brahm hai, aham hai. Kabhi bhi man mein brahm aham na paale. Sada muskarate rahe. Sada haste rahe. Hasate rahe. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All my gratitude. You have just taught us to be within ourselves, being happy all the time, uh, being in the joyous mode. So it's truly amazing. All, all our gratitude to you. Thank you for, uh, to God also for giving such a profound master, such a neat, simple, clean uh, thought, whatever you impart to us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rashi. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all of you friends. So, so let's meet again tomorrow and uh, just last few days. So let's make the best of it. See you tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you.